Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In summer, the song sings itself. When we set out to chart the sermon path for summer, we asked the question, where in the arts, in the city, are you encountering God? And for me, well, I'm cheating a bit, that my first time at bat, because the place I most fully experience God in the arts is through the hymns. Hymns help us to praise God, their shafts of brilliant sunlight through the clouds. They provide an almost mystical connection with the endless anthems of praise raising at this very moment before the heavenly throne. They unite the earth-bound church in heavenly harmony. Hymns enable us to pray, sometimes when we're too weary or worried for words. We can sing George Matheson's great, O love that will not let me go, or the spiritual precious Lord take my hand and find ourselves grounded in faith. Hymns give us a way of talking to ourselves, of encouraging ourselves, and hymns connect us with generations gone. <clears throat> We're connected back to Mary, who sang the Magnificat at the announcement of Christ's coming birth, and with Miriam and Moses, who sang after crossing the Red Sea, and we're connected with the generations of faithful who have followed. Each week, millions of Christians in local settings around the world using hymns composed by believers from every era and branch of Christendom join voices in united bursts of praise, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in their hearts to the Lord. One of my real favorites is Come, O Font of Every Blessing. Robert Robinson had a rough beginning. His father died when he was young, and his mother, unable to control him, sent him to London to learn a trade, barbering. What he learned instead was drinking, theft, and violence. When he was 17, he and his friends reportedly visited a fortune teller, Relaxed by alcohol, they laughed as she tried to tell their fortunes. But something about the encounter bothered Robert, and that evening he suggested to his buddies that they attend the evangelistic meeting being held by George Whitefield. Whitefield was one of history's greatest preachers, with a voice that was part foghorn and part violin. <laughs> we have a great entry in our Old South Encyclopedia about Whitefield, and the many times he preached here at Old South to throngs of believers. Our senior minister, Thomas Prince, invited Whitefield to preach at Old South for the first time in 1740, when he was just 26 years old but had already gained great popularity on two continents. Prince noted, he spake with a mighty sense of God, eternity, the immortality and preciousness of the souls of his hearers. Twelve years later, on that night in London, with a young Robert Robinson in attendance, he preached from Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bursting into tears, Whitefield exclaimed, Oh, my hearers! the wrath to come, the wrath to come. And Robert immediately sobered up and, sensed, and since then, three years after that, in December 1755, he gave his heart to Christ. Robert soon entered the ministry and three years later when he was just 23, while serving Calvinist Methodist Chapel in Norfolk, England, he wrote a hymn for, the season of Pente for his sermon on Pentecost Sunday. It was a prayer that the Holy Spirit might flood into our hearts with God's streams of mercy, enabling us to sing God's praises and remain faithful. Como font of every blessing has been a favorite of the church since that day. Prone to wander, I can feel it. Wander from the love I've known. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for your very own. 
When I sing this hymn in church, in my car, while doing dishes, I feel grounded. I feel connected. I feel the embrace of God, of something bigger than myself. Maybe you encounter God in a different setting, at the beach, in the garden, or around the dining room table. Or maybe it's a group of people, the family reunion, the, the support group. Or here's a suggestion, maybe you'll encounter God on a stroll along the Greenway, where gardens are juxtaposed with exhibits by local artists, and you might even find children splashing through a font of every blessing. God is meant to be like this, a place of connection, where we feel a sense of peace and simultaneously a sense of purpose where we feel accepted for who we are and at the same time challenged and pushed in new ways to become our best selves. 10 years ago, I preached a sermon in my home church in Dennis about how faith is not a list of check boxes that you have to check to show what you believe, but it is a journey, a path that meanders through our lives. That day in attendance, I was surprised to see my Uncle Bob. Now, Bob was a great supporter of this church. He helped organize the church auction every year and spent countless Saturdays under the hot tent selling every item imaginable to help support the church. But for the most part, throughout his life, Bob was not much of a churchgoer. Bob had gone through some difficult things in life, the loss of his mother in a plane crash, the Vietnam War things that had pulled him away from God, or at least that's what he felt. But he told me after that sermon that he had found God again. Perhaps the notion of the path of faith allowed him to find a path back to God. I do believe that our faith is a journey and that from time to time we are all prone to wander. In my life, I've done a bit of geographical wandering from college in New York to seminary in Chicago to a first ministry in call in Los Angeles and back. I've wandered far from home. And in my faith life, there have been many times when I've wandered. And I believe we all do from time to time. For some people, anger at God or the challenge of understanding why bad things happen to good people or a sense that life is not fair, will pull them away from their creator. For others, frustration with church politics, or conflict, or the church's struggle to change, pulls them away from being part of a faith community. For still others, and I will tell you that in my life, this has often been me, a sense of the overloaded busyness of our schedules makes church or prayer just one more thing on a to-do list that will never get completed. There are so many reasons why from time to time our hearts are prone to wander. But that's okay. In fact, God has planned for that. God has created us with wandering hearts. In fact, our wandering hearts are good for two reasons. Number one, our wandering hearts allow us to experience more of the world than we would if we never felt the inclination to look outside the walls of this building. If your heart has wandered, whether through difficult personal times or to far-flung places, likely that part of your journey has taught you things, and your life has been enriched in that learning. Second, because our hearts wander, God is able to welcome us home, to show us incredible grace. Hear again the words of Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Neither death, nor our lives, nor anything in creation, earthly or heavenly, can separate us from the love of God. Nothing we can do, nothing that someone else can do to us. No creature can separate us from God's love 
and even in the end, our wandering hearts are bound up in God's love. Let us ask God today, bind our wandering hearts to thee. For whether we attend church regularly or only occasionally, whether we have a daily spiritual practice or are too often dis distracted by the demands of daily life, whether we're on a first name basis with God or list our Facebook relationship as it's complicated, <laughs> it's all important for each of us to strengthen our connection with that home place, that God place within us that offers peace and helps us feel centered and calls us to be our best selves. On this wandering faith journey of life, may we bind our hearts to God that we might travel with confidence, direction, and love. Amen. <laughs>